Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve this crane problem here, which is set up as follows here. There's a long crane here, which is 16 meters long, which is holding an 11,000 Newton pallet of bricks right here. Uh, and for support, there's a pivot, a hinge right here, I guess, if you, if you will, and a support cable extending from this point on the crane all the way down to the ground, giving it some stability. Hopefully you can imagine uh, what that might look like. Okay. So the question is asking some of the usual things here. It wants to know what the tension in this cable is right here and what are the support forces of the hinge right here. It's a statics problem. The system isn't going to move. And we can always start the statics problem with our famous equations here that says the sum of the x force is equal to 0, the sum of the y force is equal to 0, and, of course, the sum of the torques equals 0. We don't want it moving left to right. We don't want it moving up and down. And we certainly don't want to rotate either. Uh, as far as the forces go, you definitely want to label those on there before you use any of the statics equations. And you can do that here now. I'll just sort of label all the forces I can see on the crane. There is definitely a horizontal hinge force right here, labeled H sub H for a horizontal hinge. There is also a vertical hinge force right here. I'll label it H sub vertical for the horizontal, excuse me, for the vertical hinge force. There's also a tension in this cable here pulling down like that. I'll label it T. And there's also going to be another tension in this rope right here pulling down on the crane because of the weight of the bricks. I'll call it, say, T1. These wouldn't be the same tension, obviously, because they're different ropes. So we'll just sort of proceed with the problem here and maybe start out by summing the x-forces on the crane and setting those all equal to zero. So the x-forces that I can identify on this system here are definitely the horizontal hinge force here pointing over to the right. And that's the only real obvious one here, but there now is also going to be a component of the tension pointing to the right, excuse me, pointing to the left that's along the x-axis as well, which we'd have to add in the same sum. So I better set up some geometry and make sure I know how to find that. So what I'll do to find that is I'll just go ahead and draw it on here. Uh, if this is the hinge force right here, there's going to be a horizontal component this way. I'll call it T sub X. And there's going to be a downwards vertical com component there. I'll call it T sub Y. So there's the two uh, components of the tension, X and Y components right there. Now you have to work on the angles a little bit because in order to find vector components, I need to get this angle in here. Uh, I can find that by looking at some of the other angles that are given in the system here. This angle right here was given to be 55 degrees. And this angle in here was given to be 25 degrees. So you have a couple of angles labeled in there. And if I just use some general properties I know about right triangles in here, namely that, or lines rather, that this plus this equals to 180, this angle in here is given is going to be 125 degrees. And I know that 125 plus 25 plus whatever this angle is has to be equal to 180. So that's going to make this angle in here equal to 30 degrees. So it's good to know this angle right here because this angle here is going to be the same as this one. So this 30 degrees in here gives me the angle that I can use to find my vector components. And so if I look carefully out at this little right triangle formed up here, I can see that T sub X is going to be equal to T times the cosine of 30 degrees. So I can fill in my sum of all the X forces here. I have the horizontal hinge force going to the right. I have my T times the cosine of 30 going to the left. There's no other X forces on the system, so all this can be equal to zero. Now I can sum the Y forces and set those equal to zero as well. Uh, again, the hinge will have a vertical upwards pointing force there, H sub V up like that. Uh, the next force that I'll have is not even drawn on the figure yet, but it's the weight of the beam, weight of the crane. And if you read the problem carefully here, it says that the center of mass of the crane is 7 meters from the pivot. So right here at this 7 meter point, right about down here, I'll draw a big arrow pointing straight down. It's making the, the figure a little bit messier. But I'll label that 15,000, and that's the weight of the crane acting down. So that's another one of my vertical forces right here. So I'll put a minus 15,000 in here to indicate the downwards pull of weight here opposes the upwards push of the hinges, uh, the hinges vertical forces I've drawn it there. Uh, another downwards force that I can see is the downwards tension here, T1, and I'll skip the details for now, but only because it's a statics problem and acceleration is equal to zero, I can safely um, sort of calculate in my head even that T1 is equal to 11,000. It's also a downwards pull, so I'd get 11,000 there as well. And there's one more vertical force that you have to be very careful to realize in there, this downwards pull of the tension, the downwards component of the tension, the T sub Y, is also a Y force here, so you need to remember to put that one in. From the same right triangle, I conclude that's going to be equal to T times the sine of 30. And those are all the vertical forces on the crane, so all those will be equal to zero as well. So there's my, um, my vertical uh, e statics uh, equation done. The last equation I can use, of course, is that the sum of the torques is equal to zero because we don't want it to rotate. I'll place the pivot down here at the hinge so the two hinge forces will drop out of the torque equation having that zero moment arm and just sort of proceed to uh, find the torques due to all the other forces in the system here. And I'll say anything that causes a rotation that way is positive, back the other way is going to be negative. So it'll look something like this. I'll start at the hinge here. 
There are two forces acting in the hinge, but again, they both have zero moment arms, so I'll conclude that their torques are zero, and that's the proper thing to do. Uh, the next force that I see is the weight acting right here, and the weight is acting seven meters from the pivot right there, so its moment arm will be a plus seven. The force, of course, is downwards away at the crane, the 15,000 newtons right there, and the angle between this moment arm extending up the crane and this downwards pull of gravity here can be found by doing a little bit of geometry also. This angle is quoted to be 55. This is a 90 degree angle in here. Although my drawing is getting just a tad bit messy here, this angle in here would be 35 degrees. So the downwards, the angle between the weight and the moment arm along the beam there is 35 degrees. So I need a sine of 35 in here. Again, I'm just filling in the torque equation here. That's RF times the sine of the angle between the moment arm and the force. And there's the torque due to the weight. The next force that I see as I continue up the crane here is the tension. So that would cause a counterclockwise rotation if it had its way. So there's going to be a minus sign right there. The tension is stated to be acting 3 meters from this end of the beam, which makes it 13 meters from the pivot point there. So all the moment arm of that will be 13. Of course, there's the tension in there, and the angle between the tension and the beam is 25 degrees. So I'll put a sign of 25 in there. Um, the last force acting on the beam, which would cause it to rotate, is this tension clear up here. It's going to cause a clockwise rotation if it had its way. It acts the full length of the beam, 16 meters from the pivot. It has a magnitude of 11,000 newtons in there, and the angle that this one makes relative to the beam is the same as the other one here. There's a nice big right triangle here you can imagine, something like this. This is 55 and this is 90. This will be a 35 degree angle also, so that's the angle between this force and the moment arm, which exists between the pivot and the point of application of the force. So this thing here must be multiplied by the sine of 35 degrees. Again, I'm just using the torque equation, RF times the sine of the angle. That's it for the forces, all that will be equal to zero. Now if I look very carefully at this particular equation right here, you can see that the only unknown in there is the tension. So you can just go ahead and solve for that right out. A bit of numerical work and some algebra and stuff, but you'll get something like 29,336 newtons, which is the tension in the cable, and you've got it. The very next part of the question asks for the, um, the horizontal hinge force, and you can sort of retrieve that from this equation right here, just rearranging a bit, horizontal hinge force here is T times the cosine of 30. So if I take the T, the 29,336, and multiply by the cosine of 30, I'll get the horizontal hinge force to be something like 20, 25,405 newtons, and that'll be just fine there. Uh, lastly, they want the vertical hinge force, H sub V, which is going to look like this. You can just retrieve it from the other equation right here, remembering that you have T in hand. And so if you just basically do some numerical work here in your calculator, T times the sine of 30, where T is the 29,336, add in the 15,000, the 11,000 there, you'll get a horizontal vertical hinge, excuse me, a vertical hinge force of 40,668 newtons right there. Um, one last bit of physics in here, that if you look at this equation here, you can see that the vertical hinge force basically supports the downwards weight of the crane, the downwards weight of the bricks, and the downwards component of the tension force, as it must.